What are we talking about today? An old friend. The Rolex Datejust. 36. Live from Stage A, it's the Watch Universe channel, and from Stage B, what's on the wrist? Well, thanks for showing up, everyone. Today, I'm drinking Olympia's Big Truck Espresso. Cheers. Put that coffee down. Excuse me? You think I'm fucking with you? I am not fucking with you. Your name's Levine. Uh, no, it's Rich. But this is my show, Alec. Good luck at trying to win a set of steak knives. So, a couple of um, videos back, I did an episode about the Rolex DJ36 and how it's the perfect size again. But I realized I never did a proper review for the DJ36. It's definitely old one, so let's give it that proper review. So this DJ is reference 16200 and it was acquired uh, in 2004. Um, truth be told, I didn't actually buy this watch. My father did and I went shopping with him when he went to, went to buy this Rolex for himself. Um, and he said, because one day it's going to be yours. I'm going to, you're going to inherit this and you're going to probably wear it a lot longer than I will and recently I took a, a peek at the sales receipt because I, I keep everything and the retail was in 2004 3600 and after discount I think it was 3060 um, and by today's standards the today's DJ 36 because they, Rolex still makes the 36 I think the retail is 7850 yes there are some differences between uh, the current model and the 16200 uh, even though they're both 36 I think most notably it's in the bracelet. Um, if you can see here, it, the, the newer model has the glide lock system, which is actually pretty handy. It's also a solid bracelet from what I understand. Um, this bracelet basically affords you the ability to adjust the bracelet exactly to your preference. Whereas the Oyster bracelet that I have, um, it doesn't exactly land exactly where it's supposed to. And you can see on here in this picture here, it, now I wouldn't have noticed this at all, but the Rolex dealer who sized my bracelet actually said um, this clasp right here is a little off center. It should be uh, directly in the center. It still doesn't bother me. So I took a look online at the at the current prices of a pre-owned pieces uh, such as mine, and you can see they're all actually going for uh, a lot more. I mean, we're talking uh, that the cheapest is about thirty six hundred. It can go all the way up to six thousand. I'm sure it's going to be depending on the condition of the watch. So as it turned out that this turned out to be a pretty good investment. Uh, it, it can actually be turned for a profit, even though that was never the intent. Also, this you can see on, on, on the watch here, it is considered a no-holds case. And I, I had no idea about this back then, and some people prefer no-holds. Uh, while others prefer the holes. I like this look of the no holes, so I'm not sure if this will add any value to this watch. Uh, of course, I can never sell it. I can never ever part with it. Um, but it was just nice to see what, what they're going for pre-owned. Um, the power reserve is still there and the accuracy is still there. Both the current model and, and the 16200 use the Movement 3135. Um, but there's probably, I know that there have been some subtle changes to the movement. Uh, it's been the same movement. Rolex has used the 3135 since I believe the late 80s and it's, and it's still going strong and it's really proven in my watch after 13 years absolutely no problems with it. I'm happy to talk about some of the pros and cons of this watch especially after having it for so long and w one of the pros is of course the the timeless classic. This is a look that's always been uh, relevant. It's always going to continue to be relevant and it's durable. Regardless of what people say, some of the haters out there, oh, I hate Rolex, Rolex is crap, Rolex is junk. Uh, 
people only own a Rolex because it's they're insecure, you know, etc. Blah blah blah. Uh, for me, that's not the case. I've heard those criticisms, um, but it, it's a very dependable, very durable watch. So I have. So that's one of the biggest pros. It's it's a it's a truly an heirloom piece that you can pass down. Patek has one of the best marketing slogans that I've ever heard, and that's. Um, I think it goes something like, you never truly own a Patek, you merely take care of it for the next generation. And while that might be true for Patek, I really believe that's true for Rolex. That slogan really fits Rolex and I believe applies to Rolex probably like no other watch uh, other than a Patek. Another pro is that this the DJ36 can fit uh, into any occasion. You can, I, can dress it, I can wear it while I'm casually dressed or when I'm wearing a suit. It's perfect for any occasion, and there aren't many watches that can um, that I feel apply to any situation. One of the, I guess, cons or drawbacks of the watch is, as beautiful as it is, um, the finishing could be a little bit tighter, I feel, especially the brushwork. Now, the gold standard for a brushed finish is the Audemars Piguet, the Royal Oak. That AP, that's that's the standard. That's, that's the gold standard, and every watch that's done really well on a brush finished is always it's inevitably compared to the AP um, and one of the other watches I think actually belongs in that same sentence is the Jean Richard's um, that line with the brush finishing they do a really excellent job with their finishing too I would even say that's on par with the APs however the DJ at least my model is not I don't feel on that level of, of finishing um, the polishing is fine it's certainly not I would say like a Zeratsu finishing, um, such as my GS, but it's fine. Now, some people might not have a complaint about that because some people wear their watches uh, really loosely. I don't like doing that because I feel like it can get bumped around a little bit more and I feel a little bit uh, more insecure while wearing it. Whereas I like to wear my watches snug because I know it is always in place and uh, there's less chance of, of, of the watch slipping around and, and hitting on hitting on objects. One of the things that I wanted to uh, show everyone out there is the loom. It's not the most fantastic loom, but here, take a look here and you'll get an idea of what the loom is like. It's pretty decent, as you can see that it's, you can read it, you, I have no problems telling the time in a movie theater. The basic cost to have a Rolex service is $700, and that's, and that's just for the cleaning and any resurfacing of the, of the outside, of the outer case. Um, and if it needs any if it needs any parts, of course, that's going to be extra. But the basic service cleaning is seven hundred dollars. And if you take it to your to the any AD and they send it out to Rolex, it's going to take three to five three to five weeks. But first, it, within the first two weeks is when they'll give you an estimate, and then from that three to five weeks. So you're looking probably between five to seven weeks without the watch. But if if the AD has uh, a watchmaker on site, a Rolex watchmaker, then it's still $700, but you can get it back a little sooner, about three to four weeks, I've been told, depending on the backlog and what how how busy that watchmaker's plate is. So for my father and for myself, owning a Rolex was never about a status symbol. It, all, it has been and is about an heirloom timepiece that we want to pass down from one generation to the next. And for me, that makes me a proud Rolex owner, not a, I guess, a snobby or insecure Rolex owner. I'm very, I'm a very proud uh, DJ36 owner. Now, some of the criticisms for any Rolex owner I've heard is that they're crap, they're junk, etc., etc. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, um, it's just like a lot of people who who don't have a BMW, and I don't have a BMW, by the way. But yeah, I've heard people say that. Oh, everyone has a BMW, everyone has a Rolex, but, you know, they only drive a BMW because it's a status symbol and because everyone else has one, you know, they're crap cars. And I will admit that I used to think that same way about BMWs, especially the 3 Series. However, I did test drive one, and I got to tell you that, that the inline 6 on on a 3 Series with a 335 was actually very sweet. It it. It was a really nice engine, and I felt that that car handled really well. So um, I backed off of that off of that thought about how, about my negative thoughts about a BMW. Um, but I just kind of liken the Rolex to that BMW, unless you have one, and and there's especially if you, if there's a story behind it. Um, 
I think that the owner of a Rolex uh, truly gets it. So, oh, look at this. We have, a, we have a special guest caller. It's Archie Luxury. Let me grab this. Hi, Archie. How are you? Great. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in the middle of a show here. So may I put you on speaker? Fantastic. All right, you're on speaker. Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III, affectionately known as the Pontiff, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III, Whoa. and also Paul Pluto. Right, that's true. All, all those names, you are known as those names. I'm actually um, surprised that you would remember me. We didn't meet for very long. Jeff! 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 <laughs> Rich, my, my name is Rich, but you can call me Jeff. Today, I want to talk to you. Sure. I heard you had a successful New Zealand trip. Can you, you want to tell us about that? It's not easy being a YouTube celebrity. Oh, well, I wouldn't know. I, I'm here and you're up here. I'm on top of the fucking world! Mm -hmm. Yeah, things must be going well for you. I hope they're going well for you. May I ask uh, what car you're driving nowadays? Mercedes four-wheel drive. Oh, wow. That, that's a nice ride. Congratulations. I love you, Kenny. I really fucking love you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, again, Rich. My name is Rich. Man, I'm so hungry. I knew I shouldn't have taken his call. Yeah, listen, um... I lost me mojo. I lost my mojo. Mojo! Okay, but, but yes, but... I lost my mojo. Let me just say... I lost my mojo. Mm -hmm. I have always wanted to ask you this question. May I ask you this question? I don't do shit for free. Oh, sure, of course. I don't of do course, shit right. for You know what? I, I think I might have. Uh, yep. I, I have I have twenty bucks right here. Uh, hello, Archie. Are you still there? Well, um, you know, he probably didn't want to run up a a longer phone bill than. Than necessary. Uh oh, I hope he doesn't consider that question about what car he rides as a paid question. Hmm. Let me know your DJ36 stories, and thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time.